coming at you live because I got a killer internet connection out here. And uh, we just finished this 28 panel ground mount. It's a Solar 12K system. It's got a 400, almost 560 foot trench. Uh, it's got arc lithium batteries. It's got generator backup. This thing has all the bells and whistles. So I just want to give you a quick tour with my gimbal. I'm using an Osmo gimbal and an iPhone and I'm streaming. This is a live video guys. So I apologize for the for the uh, liveness of it all. This is pretty cool. This guy's got all kinds of sawmill stuff going on. He's got a bunch of timber. And he's got, looks like he's gonna be setting the sawmill right there. Lots of stuff. One comment already that this is looking good. Is that the quality of the video and the sound that's looking good? Or is that the work that's looking good out there? So here's our, here's our uh, solar. We're going right into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, this is the disconnect, pull box, and the transition. So you can see there's where we transition. There's where we come off the solar and come down into the pull box. And then we go up into these IMO disconnect. And then we transition into our wire that we pull in our conduit that we have running about 5 million feet. And um, these IMOs, man, they've just kind of changed my business. I mean, it's a nice little switch. They got millions of them out there. This is a four pole, 25 amp switch. It's a DC isolator, PV array DC isolator. It's got a little bit of dirt on it. Hey, thou shalt not muzzle the ox while he treadeth corn. But this thing is, um, this is a great switch. They got millions of them out there, zero failures. You may recognize the switch. It's on the side of a lot of inverters. And uh, we love buying these switches and putting them on our solar arrays. We think it's good to have DC disconnects, especially when stuff's really spread apart. That's just a standard weather head right there that we're coming into. Put a little drip loop on there. And uh, this does have the EMP protection. So there's one of the ferrite cores. Uh, these Every panel has ferrite cores. Steel on this job. It's by Sinclair Designs. If you're looking for one of these, let me know. Get, get get in touch with me if you're trying to design one of these systems. So I'm just going to walk around now and show you the array. And yeah, it's straight. Scott and Abraham have been building a lot of these since Scott bought the post driver. It's pretty dang straight though. And uh, Scott, Scott's got a post driver, which I'll show you. I'll have another video of this. It's going to be footage that I edited. You guys... Oh, and a shout out to my good friend, Ben. I want to do a shout out to Ben. Old Ben, he's a faithful, faithful viewer. And I just wish we'd get him out here on site pulling some wire. But I think he lives too far away. Hope you're having a good day, Ben. Uh, so this thing is all galvanized steel. I think it's got like a G90 coating. And uh, this is just the most cost effective, fastest, strongest, bang for your butt ground mount we found and uh, these posts are pounded so a lot of guys are asking me about ground mounts you know like how deep are the posts and it depends if you're on an incline or a grade like it's probably 12 feet right there but on this side it's you know you can just about touch there it's about eight feet so this is our customer base is primarily you know landowners farmers want power when the power's out uh real quick this solar array 28 panels it's wired in four strings of seven and then the so the way that would be on this one is you'll just have straight runs of seven four straight runs of seven and then we use these uh, these are uh, MC, all MC4 connectors, but then this is an MC4, uh, it's called a, gosh, it's, the word is escaping me. This connector is used to parallel. You can to connect two strings of panels into one string, and you can do that. Uh, this is a branch connector, male and a female branch connector. We use these 
a lot, especially on ground mounts. Great place to use them because if you ever need to get to one, you can. So we try to do the best job we can with the wire management. You can see the way we're using these clips. These are wire management clips. Not a hard thing to get. You can get them on Amazon or you can get them from me. All this stuff you can buy it from me, guys. If you want to contact me, I can get you all of your system. I can design it. So we've got a guy asking, because this is a live video. I also want to show my boy, because he's really into sawmills. This is a hobby sawmill going. Wouldn't line, mind loading up some of them 12 by 12s on the trailer. Heading home, building me a little timber frame. Raising a family. He's got some big stuff. There's Scott's machine. Oh, and here's the post driver. You guys want to see the post driver? This is the post driver. Somebody's asking me, what happens when you hit a rock? That's a bad day right there, fellas. Turns a post into a pretzel. Uh, so you definitely don't want to hit a rock. If you do hit a rock, um, you probably have to pull it out and move everything over. But that's why you, uh, on a big solar farm, they would do a huge soil report. But on something like this, you know, we're just generally going to rely on some local knowledge. There's my dang thing for my DJI Osmo. All right, guys, so we're going to go from sawmill land down into the open box tour. So a lot of people ask me, can you, and I'm going to try to go fast, but we just dream about sawmills at my house. I wanted my little boy to see this. We just dream of the sawmill. But it doesn't look so beautiful here, but whatever. Look at them 12 by 12s. All right, so a lot of people ask, how far can you run solar? So let's look at this. This is over 560 feet. We're probably at 600 feet once you count all our poles and stuff. So I'm going to take you down the trench path. And here's the thing. I'm going to do this. All right, so here's the thing. I don't want to trip again either because I busted yesterday. If you're going really far, and I'm trying to talk in layman's terms, the thing that you're worried about is voltage drop. Voltage drop is uh, when the wire is too small and it can't carry all the electrons, and over long distance, you, don't, you lose power. So the ways that you combat voltage drop on a long distance pull is you try to come in as an at as high a voltage as you possibly can. So you wire your solar in as high a voltage as possible. And it used to be difficult to do that when you had to use 150 volt charge controllers. With the solar arc, I think it's 550. 550 is when damage occurs, 550 volts. And we're typically trying to come in at like 400. It may be 450, I have to look at the specs. But we, we're typically going in strings of, you know, seven to nine. With 72 cell panels, obviously your strings are gonna be your voltage is higher, so your strings are going to be lower. And you can't have, you got to watch out for the coldest day of the year because that's when the solar panel voltage is the highest. But if you wire your solar panels with the highest voltage possible, and then you use the right size wire, which on this job it's number eight, you're not going to have voltage drop. You're just going to have to spend a bunch of money on wire and pipe, but it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to make it cost prohibitive. And I get that a lot. People ask me, is it going to be cost prohibitive to be 400 feet away. It's really not that big of a deal in the grand scheme on a project like this. Now, here we are. So one of the things we've done on this job is we threw in a backup transfer switch. So our solar inverter, it's a battery backup system, and we can also feed power to the shop, and he can run anything he wants in the wood shop. This, is, this guy's a major tinkerer, so we're not really worried about him managing his loads. He understands what he had. He has an electrical background. He's able to do what he needs. This is one of our pull boxes. We're using those PDBs, power distribution blocks. That's how I like to transition DC circuits. They're strong as all get out, mounted in the box. It's not what definitely not blue wire nuts. And it um, is not going anywhere. It's not flopping around. Wires don't fall out on you. 
Uh, yes, I know somebody's going to say, you can't have AC and DC in the same box, Johnny. You can't do that. But look, they're not touching, and they're separated. And as long as they're in the same system, they're identified. Uh, the, the voltage of the the voltage rating of the wire is high enough to handle all the voltage. Probably give that a little more of a bend when I get done here. Oh, there it goes right there. Um, then you really don't have a lot to worry about. I've never had any inspector have a real problem with that. But you could always put a divider in there if you want to physically. They are physically separated, but you could physically isolate them. So if you're going to just be an armchair engineer and freak out about that, you can. So what we did, because it was such a long pull, is we pulled to this box. Then we pulled to this house. So I'll take you over here and show you. There's a lot of wood on this job. My little boy wants some pictures of the wood shop. But it's a nice house. A lot of nice farms we get to work on. These little prepper farms. Customer has a generator. If you got a, you can run Solar with a generator. It's a problem with a lot of grid type battery backup systems, including the Generac power cell. It can't handle the generator. Poor Generac power cell. This is another. This is the box we pulled up to. So we pulled up to this one, and. Got another PDB. This PDB we're using to transition between a large wire that is a uh, uh, number two SCR cable. We, we're transitioning between that and copper. And uh, that's a good way to, it's also a really good way to transition. When you have really big wires, the transition can become difficult. You can't use wire nuts anymore. You can buy $20 Polaris lugs or you can buy this thing, which is about 20 bucks and mount it in there. And that's a good way to transition. We're also using this pull box. We pulled up into it. We, tr we have a disconnect for the solar so that they can disconnect solar when it comes to the house. And then we have, that's like a common sense rapid shutdown. That's what I like to call that. And then we transitioned into MC cable and we got the anti-short bushings and we're taped up right there. If anybody knows a better way to bring, it, bring MC cable into you know, chase it, or we're just using this PVC conduit. We've got the MC sleeved, and then we transition right there. But um, the the MC cable is a great tool to have to be able to run through your your tight spaces. You can chase this stuff up through walls. You can run it through crawl spaces. DC circuits have got to be in some kind of a metal conduit, guys, because if they get hit or something with a nail or an axe or whatever could have a fire. So from here, we've got our utility disconnect. We've got our solar circuits in this big pipe. And then we've got in this other pipe, we've got uh, the feed out to the barn. So the guy wanted power out to his barn. This backup power system. You got to have power. And then I'll take you in the mech room real quick. And that'll be the end of this tour. How's the reception, guys? Does everybody see everything pretty good? There's engineer seven, seven, five, the boss. Practical PP LLC. It's been a pleasure working with him. I got a shirt last night. Um, so this, you're live boss. Hello. Hello. We're ready to, we're ready to do this. We've run these arc batteries down to 87%. They were full. Load to it. Hit them with a heavy load and they didn't budge. It just had the voltage flat as all get out. That's how a, a lithium battery just holds the load. So we're doing a fake grid down test. Or we're going to, I gotta go fire up the generator though. Are you ready for that or you wanna wait? I just wanna wait just a second until this video is over. Okay. I got 27 people watching you, big Hello, boss. 27 people. Tell them about when you got out of the car this morning and the bagpipes were just a blow and the wind was a breezy. You thought of the motherland. You could smell the oatmeal. I started a tear, shed a tear, and thought of the motherland. Thought of the mutt me mother. Anyway, You're sounding awful Irish, I'm so, I can't help it, dude. So this Solar guys, she's loaded up. Commoner's got her boiling water inside. We always like to test the fool out of our systems if we have time, right? Sometimes we don't have as much time. This is great. Yeah. There's our wireway. This is six foot wireway. This is the old body style solar he wanted emp hardened huh indoor. this is the indoor body style sorry she's got emp hardened put that sticker on there you know she's been tested 
Uh, that's our transfer switch. You see a ton of these guys. We use these things. These are 100 amp transfer switches, and we we just use the fool out of them. Now, this allows us, this one in this particular application is allowing the customer to select whether or not the Solark or the generator is running his critical load panel. Once again, this guy's pretty pretty savvy. He's got electrical background. He knows what he's doing, so he's going to be managing his load and grid down scenarios. Um, Used a lot of SER cable on this job because we kind of had to build it for 100 amps, even though it was, um, you know, the Solark's only a 50 amp inverter. It goes on a 50 amp breaker, but we, we ran an SER cable for everything. So it's a little bit difficult to work with, but you know. Yeah, we got room for another inverter. And then these ARC batteries, man, we just are loving these ARC batteries. Uh, ARC lithium was, uh, it's, a, it's a battery that was developed by a very smart Amish fellow we know. And uh, he said, why not make my own battery? And we, he was an installer, so we know that he designed a good battery. You've seen these in my other videos, guys. And to me, this battery is probably the most uh, economical lithium battery that is not risky. Not it's Alibaba. got, yeah, it's not Alibaba, has a warranty, it's UL listed. It's got support, it was designed by an installer got an awesome screen I love this screen it tells you what the state of charge of the battery is it tells you based on the load like this battery's got a 19 amp 20 amp load on it 26 amps it's, it's telling you how long the battery can power that load based on the draw I think that's cool there's another one it's got a, a really easy wiring scheme it's got terminals on the front and the back so we can do these bus bars and then it's also got terminals underneath. If you want to put this thing in a rack, you can, you can, you've got even more terminals. It's got handles. She's hefty, isn't she? She's a, she's a hefty battery. Yeah, I'm loving it. 138 pounds. These batteries are, I'm selling these batteries. Uh, if you could contact me after this video, I'll give you a little deal, but these batteries are 2,500 bucks a pop. Shipping is about $250 and, um, that's whether you buy one battery or three, the shipping's going to be the same. And this is a Solark. It's our flagship system, the Solark 12K inverter with a lithium battery. We like it. Uh, some people will ask, how are you going to get around EMP hardening with a lithium battery? We're going to have replacement BMSs for these batteries. They're a little bit of a bottleneck in the supply chain right now, but I have already replaced a BMS on a battery before on another brand and it was not that difficult. So that's coming down the line. And then this is our critical load. They got all kinds of gadgets here too. They got the Harvest Right dehydrator. Scott's got a label show. Scott's selling labels. If anybody wants to buy a label, he's got all the labels on display. <laughs> I like your label display, boss. Thank you. Um, we put in a, a, a plug for the Tesla in case he wants to hit it hard and bring down the power into the battery, lithium to lithium. I got a Tesla charger plug and um, this is our main panel. We got CTs. The Solark watches the consumption of the whole house and it has some functionality that most inverters don't come with out of the box. He wouldn't even have to grid tie this if he didn't want to. It can uh, literally offset all as much load as it can in the house. The batteries do not have to be off the floor. I was just asked that. They actually come with a little stand and that's one of the ways that they're designed. In the ARC manual, he tells you, my camera's messing up, excuse me guys. But in the ARC manual, he tells you the ways that you can install his battery. And this is definitely one of the supported ways. See that little stand right there? That is for putting it on the ground. And that's about the easiest, quickest way to do it right there too, guys. Um, Solark's got built in, it's got Wi-Fi out of the box, which we're having a little trouble right now, but who doesn't have trouble with their, with their comps? And um, like I said, the Solark has, it has some functionality already built into it where if you don't want a grid tie and you want to just be in what they call limited power to load or limited power to home, you can have a uh, setting enabled where um, the Solark powers everything in this panel. It senses what's being used in the feeders and it attempts through this breaker right here to offset all the power usage in the panel because it can see what the, what the house is using without 
pushing power past there, and it's able to do that with these CTs. These are the CTs. Everybody's always kind of unclear on what that is, but it just snaps around the panel, it snaps around the feeder, and that CT is how, it's measuring the how much power the house is using. And uh, and then over here on the screen, that data that you get is this right here. You can see the HM. So when the house is using power, you see values right there. Right now we don't have anything because we've got the grid down and we're just testing it. We're hitting this thing with a heavy load, giving her a functional test, making sure she's wired and ready to go. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar. I'm a licensed electrician in the state of Georgia. NABSEP certified solar installer and a partner, installation partner with uh, Practical Preppers on a lot of their big jobs. And if there's any kind of solar project where you're looking to get material, you're looking to get design, consulting, or you are looking for an install or just anything, shoot me a line. Some guy called me the other day and just said some nice things. I really appreciated that. So we hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys learned something. And I hope that uh, this video makes more solar installers and more solar get installed. Hope everybody has a blessed day today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll, ch I'll be checking the comments. I'm sorry I don't check the comments as they're going in these live videos. I use it more as a way to just get content up when I got a good cell phone connection because I got five kids and I'm a working man. Don't turn it off yet. What? Can you tell them about the time of use? Uh, what, okay, you want to tell them about the time of use? The reason we're doing this system? The reason we're doing it is very few systems have we installed that we get to take advantage of the battery in the solar every day. They have time of use rates and it switches twice a year where they are charged an incredible amount of money per kilowatt um, from four to seven and then from six to nine in the winter. And so we're discharging the batteries during that time so that it's offsetting the cost that it would have cost them to reduce power. So this is our second time of use system. The first one we've been looking at for about eight, um, six months doing fantastic. They don't have a power bill. They're very happy. So this is, a, again, a time of use system. So if you're on time of use, seriously consider using a lithium battery to zero out your, your power bill. I don't know if you got down below. Did you get your AC disconnect and all that on your live? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You're signing out. You got to get to work. This is Engineer 775 and Johnny Valentine. See you both. Signing out. Does the harvest, somebody just asked if the harvest right pulls a lot of power? Yes, tons of power. She brings it down. 30 amps. Woo! I'm going to make sure I don't have any unanswered questions real quick. I got a lot of people answering, yeah, asking questions. Yeah, both practical preppers. We got that affiliate link. Reselling. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got. Sterling Moses, you know him? He's yeah. asking questions. Question? Neutral does not get transferred. He, um, yeah, Zen Jammin says, always run two inch, no wire nuts. They call me two inch Johnny. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They call me two inch Johnny because I always run a two. They call me two inch Johnny all the time. I run the two inch pipe and pull a little string line. That's a new one. You like that part? Let's, let's kind of threw that in there for you. You don't need three arc batteries for a harvest right. You need at least two arc batteries for a solar arc. And um, that's about all the answers. You don't have one called two, two inch water pipe, do you? No. All right, guys, we're signing out.